would like to thank all of our patrons for your continued support. Pretty sleepless night for me. Um, kept getting up checking the anchor around midnight or like yeah 11 50 i think it was right before that i heard a sound of like like if you ran your hand through water and like the water filling in the void it kept making the sound in the v-burf and i was like that's strange never heard that sound at anchor before and then i got up checked peeked outside and um it appeared we had slipped our stern anchor which was no no big deal we weren't at risk of like slamming into anything on a single hook but um we were definitely like in a completely different position and had kind of swung parallel to a fishing boat that was on a single hook so i was like well there's no risk and nothing to be done tonight so i just left it be i got up and checked a couple times the night make sure we weren't getting close to the rocks but um everything was fine but this morning we woke up and it's very very rolly um it seems like there's two contrary swells there's like kind of the regular like nor northwesterly swell and then there's a southerly swell it seems like came in so we're like bobbing all over the place this morning pretty rough um the one big downfall we found about this anchorage is there are yellow jackets everywhere so we slept with all the hatches open, and this morning, Steady's like chomping at the yellow jackets. I don't know if he, I don't know if he bit it or not. His mouth hasn't swollen up yet, so we'll see. But I closed everything up, so that's a bummer. I'm about to row him to shore and uh, use the bathroom. We'll see how many yellow jackets are up there. Camille went yesterday and said there were lots of flies and stuff. So, so here's the rocks that I was like nervous about us getting close to, but we're in the same position we were in. to this little rocky point and it looks like they added them so there's not anywhere for us to like cozy in huh? yeah I'll show you what the map she's talking about so there's like this was like our book and this showed like the spot had it to you know bowster and anchor behind the rock this is all filled with moorings now and they're pushing us you're, we're pushed way out past here so, and who knows, maybe they've been there. I mean, this is from 2010, so maybe they did add it in the last 10 years, but. It does suck. That's the one shitty thing about Catalina is like, there are so many moorings and it's like, it's not like they're $20 a night. They're like $50 a night for a boat this size or 47 or something crazy. So. If they were like $10 a night, but then to take up all of the good anchorages with moorings, it's just greed. But it's okay. We're not going to be here that much longer. And then we'll be able to anchor it. Any kind of island you can imagine. Alright, it's time for me to get this pup ashore so he can relieve himself.
So, uh, James and Steady are ashore, and they went to go do some dog business and do a drone flight, and they flew by, and I heard, like, it's like a little helicopter coming and said hi. Um, I'm trying to make breakfast, and I also just rearranged the food stuffs. Um, the fridge is working pretty well. I'm stoked about it. Um, we're gonna have to add a little shelf, because everything's just, like living on top of each other right now, but I think it's keeping things pretty cold. I'm slowly losing the ice in the Yeti, so I put all of the, like, things in that are, like, in jars or just beverages, like canned unopened things that we want to drink cold, um, <laughs> uh, in the Yeti so they can just, like, float around in the cold water ice that's left um I don't know just trying to like think about how the like things in packages and the different kinds of packages like I'll be really stoked when we can get uh eat like easily get eggs that aren't from the grocery store so like from a farmer's market or some somebody who has chickens because having to keep your eggs in the fridge is so silly um they take up a lot of room and when they like come in the paper egg carton it gets it, like it gets floppy and um, we have an egg keeper but I forgot it forgot a lot of things this trip um <laughs> we were really really busy trying to get ready before we came um I don't know just thinking about food thinking about like ooh, there's a yellow jacket in here um just thinking about like when we start our big journey, how um, I'm gonna like make different systems to keep things the freshest, the longest, and how I'm gonna have to um, probably adapt some of my some of my habits of of cooking and our habits of eating because of uh, you know the kind of storage we have, the kind of availability of things, um, and I'm. I feel like I'm pretty flexible, it's just, I know they're all, like, I'm just like, oh, this is, this is how big our fridge is, like, this is, I gotta, or, like, we run out of vegetables really fast, and that's a bummer, um, um, I'm starting some pickling and kimchi and stuff projects, so, I think that'll help with our veg. Uh, when we're cruising. Sorry, my brain isn't working. I don't think I had enough coffee yet. Um, I made breakfast. Hi! How do you do? Oh, you guys are so cute. <laughs> you know how hard it is to row with this thing? Uh, I was wondering why you were rowing like that. Weed wranglers. Oh, that thing is so beautiful. <laughs> is it crazy? It's so pretty. Here. The like giantest kelp leaf ever. Hop up, hop. Hop up. Jump, hop up. jump. Yep. Hop up. Oh, barely. Almost. Can you help me here? That thing's cool. What did you bring me? Last night, Camille paddled past this and was like real stoked at how big it was. So me and Steady brought it home for her today so she could get a closer look at it. It's Massive. It probably so came from like big. 70 to 100 feet of water as big as it is. I wonder how long it takes one of those to grow. I don't know. It's insane. Now. It's so beautiful. <laughs> See you later, friends. And it's very hard to row. <laughs> it's like a sea drogue. That thing was very, <laughs> made it very difficult to row that little dinghy. How was it on shore? Flies. Lots of flies. Lots of flies, oh, right? Oh my god. No fun. They're not biters, though. They're just annoying. They're just annoying. <laughs> That's time to have breakfast and uh, go for a dive. Woo! So there appears to be an invasion of sea salps. We think that's what they are, but they are insane. Oh. 
Wow. Are those fish eat them? Yeah, they munch on them for sure. Crazy. Yeah, and they're all over, like, right where the water line is. They look like somebody dumped a bag of, like, peach gummies all over the place. But they're firm on shore, right? Yeah, when you touch it, they look like they're going to be really slimy and soft. And maybe they are in in this state when they're full of water. But um, on shore, I thought they were going to be slimy and gross. And they're actually pretty, pretty firm and not slimy at all. And they're also not super, it's not like a bunch of dead fish washed up. It doesn't stink really bad. Yeah, it's weird. They're a weird thing. I think that's why there's all these flies over there. Oh, that would make sense. Here's our stern line. Oh, see, it is taut, so it must have re-grabbed in the night. Or we just had so much slack on it that it allowed us to be pulled parallel to what we are right now but we're in the exact same position we were when we anchored last night this fish but we had I had some uh, sashimi salmon in um, 
in the fridge that I had intended to just eat raw, but we brought it with us. Um, so I gave it just a little sear um, on the outside because um, it had been sitting around for a day, so I wanted to cook it a little bit, but that like that's how you cook a fish. Like it fell apart on its own, but it's still like wiggly and jiggly. <laughs> Um, and I've got kimchi and rice and quinoa with mine, and then you've got, what do you have? Same thing for dinner. For dinner. The tasty Middle Eastern stew. Hopefully, we find something I can cut. Well, I looked for scallops today, I didn't see any. Yeah, we went on, <clears throat> we went on a nice dive today. Um, pretty amazing. Probably your best dive ever, right? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, this, like... I, I know, I think I've been complaining maybe even a little too much to James, but I haven't had more than... I've, I've had terrible visibility. This is like, oh, like, you can see things now. It's, it is actually really fun. Um, the kelp was amazing. It was like, like, being in there with all the fish, you're like, I could totally, I could live down here. This is nice. <laughs> yeah, it was a great dive. Um, made our way around Indian Rock, and, um... Went down to 60 feet, which is the deepest Camille's gone so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, just cruised around and then came back to the boat underwater, checked out the anchors. We did see that the stern anchor indeed did drag last night and it drove really far, but then it bit on its own, which is good. And um, it's secure now, both anchors are secure. So, but it was crazy. It looked like a racetrack underwater. You'll see it in the footage. Uh, just this crazy line where it drug so yeah the holding here isn't great it's like sl like a foot of sand over a hard something um, so yeah not great holding here but we're gonna have food and then we're gonna take a nap and then probably well we're gonna do a night dive tonight for sure Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. It helps us a lot. Thanks again to all of our patrons. Your contributions help us get the boat ready for big things. Until next time. James brought me a present.